Rajin. Wright comes around the screen, gets to the baseline. He's five of five. Right, but this lineup that Washington has it now, they can actually run with Seattle. They've got a very fast team out there. Hi, this is Robert Wilkins, a.k.a. Basketball Tall. Welcome to my channel. I'm here today with a legend. And when I say legend, he's a real legend. His name is Larry Wright better known to many as Assistant Principal Larry Wright. Have you guys ever heard of that name? Have you ever heard anybody that may have gone to Gramlin State University, All-American? Or maybe in the NBA with Washington, back then called the Bullets, today the Wizards, who played with Elvin Hayes and Wes Onsale. So I'm here at his elementary school and gonna talk to him today because he's someone who I know, who I had an opportunity to play a little ball against. But here's something so unique that's different from everybody. He won a high school state championship with Richwood High School. And he also won an NBA, well, let's put it this way, he didn't win it himself, but he was part of that NBA championship team back in 1978. And all of us here in Northeast Louisiana and around the world was focused on Larry Wright, someone who we know. How you doing, Larry? Doing good, man. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. It's Retired now into my new gig, and now I'm sitting here with a legend. It's a pleasure to be sitting here with you, a guy I haven't seen in 30 years. Plus. Plus. And to see you walk down the hall of the school that I'm working at, to do this story on Larry Bugai Wright. And it, what a story it's going to be. It doesn't get any better. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let's flash back a little bit. I remember back in the day, and of course, you know, you won state. And Richwood was 3A back in those days, weren't they? Yes, we And were. that's equivalent to like 5A today if there's a 6A school. Right. And you played with Sammy White who was the NFL Rookie of the Year in 1976. And I remember watching that in that Super Bowl game, right. you know, with Minnesota, Fran Tarkin in the quarterback. And I remember seeing Sammy, they called him Doo-Doo here. You yes, know, right. And saw him <clears throat> falling down in the, in the end zone, but he caught that touchdown yes. pass. Yes, And the thing about it, though, Larry, y'all played in that same championship team. Yeah, backcourt. Yeah. And I tell people now, uh, we were probably – the best backcourt in the state of Louisiana. I know we were the best in the state of Louisiana and possibly the United States of America in 1972. It didn't come in any better than white and right. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, white and right. But you know what? That's a lot of truth to that. Yes. Think about this. You won high school, state championship in basketball. Then you go on, both of you go to the same school. Okay. Gramlin State University, an HBCU school in the SWAC conference, where you became All-American, what, two-time, I believe, yes, wasn't it? Yes, yes. And, and the thing about it is you get drafted in the first round in the NBA, the 14th pick of the first round. Then Sammy also goes and becomes the Rookie of the Year. Yes. How does that happen? Only from Monroe. <laughs> <laughs> Monroe, Louisiana, Monroe, 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 Louisiana. And I want to tell you, only in Monroe, Sam and I, people don't know this, Sam and I started first grade together mm -hmm. at Swayze Elementary. Okay, then we went on to Richwood together. More championship at Richwood, then we go to Grambling together. Sammy won win SWAC championship. I win SWAC tournament championship. And... I attribute that to a guy by the name of Herschel West. He was our basketball coach. Coach West. Right, but Sammy played football and basketball. A lot of people don't know Sammy probably could have played in the NBA in basketball. Yes. That's the type of athlete he was. And he's certainly the best teammate I've ever played with, no doubt about it. He's the most unselfish guy. You know, I, I've known in my life as an athlete. And we went from first grade all the way through high school, through Gremlin State University, to professional sports from Monroe. 
Wow, wow. And speaking of Monroe, all of Northeast Louisiana, you're talking about this is a hub for recruiting, especially back in those days. Right. Because I remember it was on ESPN, they talked about up to the 1980s, Gramlin had produced more professional football players in the NFL than any school in history up to that point. And then not just that, you played for a legendary coach, Hobby, and I got to say this too. Did you have anything to do with Coach Hobby coming to my home to recruit me to play for Grambling? You from Monroe. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt about it. Because I remember when we were playing at the Civic Center, you know, because they had the New Star World High School Basketball Tournament, and, and then they had, you know, the, the College SWAC tournament, tournament and all of that there. Mm -hmm. And for those of you that don't know the SWAC, we're talking about the Southwest Athletic Conference, mm -hmm. all HBCU schools. Mm -hmm. And the thing about it is, we're talking about Gramlin State, Southern, Prairie View, A&M, Texas Southern, Jackson State, Alcorn, et cetera. And you're talking back those days, they were all, you're talking about hugs for, you know, recruiting. No That's where all your that. best athletes. Now, Alabama, LSU, they all getting these players coming from right in Monroe. From Monroe, Louisiana. And the size of Monroe, to be that small. Yes and to have as many athletes to come from that little area, I don't think there's anywhere else in the United States right. that you can come to a place that small and have those type athletes. You take a James Harris. Yeah. The first black quarterback. Los Angeles Rams. Yes, from Monroe. You take Lane Howe, Michael Howe, Dallas Howe. Dallas Howe, yes. From Monroe, Jamie Caleb. A lot of people don't even remember him, but he played in the backfield with the great Jimmy Brown mm. from Monroe. So when people started talking around this nation about where athletes are, they need to stop in Monroe yes. and check Monroe out. But don't forget Bill Russell. Bill Russell, the and, GOAT. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of people talk about Michael Jordan is the greatest player they ever play. I beg the difference. <laughs> Bill Russell won 11 out of yes. 13 championships. How do you judge a man being the greatest if you don't pick Bill Russell? Because he won more than anybody. anybody. Michael won six. Yes. Bill won 11 out of 13 from Monroe. Monroe. And don't forget, Monroe, we're talking northeast Louisiana. Don't forget, we have uh, from Rabel. The great. Elvin Hayes, my teammate, one of the best to ever lace the sneakers up from Monroe, Louisiana. And see, I can go back further than that with some guys that didn't play professional basketball. We had a guy by the name of Billy Robinson. Oh, yes, that yes. That went to Wasman High School. Yes. Should have played in the NBA. We had a guy by the name of Joe Walker. Mm. From Richwood High School. I seen Joe get 64 one night. The, the guy from the University of Houston came, he was playing against Elvin Hayes, mm -hmm. came to recruit Elvin Hayes. Joe started off, the coach said, Well, he looked like he's about 5'9. Hey, after the third quarter, Joe had 54. The coach said, He looked like he may be six feet. <laughs> after the fourth quarter, Joe had 64. Wow. Guy Lewis, the great legendary coach of Houston, say he looked like he's about 6'3". <laughs> <laughs> so I'm saying there's been some great players that didn't have the opportunity to play professional sports. Yes. <laughs> that were my mentors, mentors, and a guy like Herschel West, three-time All-American at Grambling State University, All-American at Eula D. Britton from Ravel, Louisiana, played with the great Willis Reed at Grambling State mm -hmm. University. They won the NAIA National Championship in 60-61. Mm -hmm. And Willis Reed told me Herschel West was the best player he ever played with. Now, we're talking about the legendary yes. Willis Reed. Yes. I still remember this with the Knicks when he get injured. Yes. And then he go out and he come back on hopping and limping. Here come the captain. Yes. I think we see Willis coming out. There he comes right now, six feet ten from Grambling, the captain of the Knicks, the most valuable player of the NBA. And they won. And then you know what's unique about that? 
<clears throat> I was at Grambling at the time. Willis was in the NBA. And the world was wondering if Willis Reed was going to play. But sitting in the office with Coach Hobby, like we sitting in here mm -hmm. now, Willis called Coach Hobby and asked Coach Hobby to say, what you think, Coach? And Coach Hobby to say, Biggin, you got to be out there. Isn't that something? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that something? Only at Graham. <laughs> and, he went, and he went back out there. That's right. He limped out there. Yeah. It made a world of difference. Yes, still. no doubt about it. And Reed now is outside. There's his second shot. He is two for two. Three, two, one. We have a new NBA champion. You know, and, and you think about your mentor, Coach West. Coach your West. high school coach at Richwood. He himself got drafted, didn't he? Yes, he got drafted in the second round by the Philadelphia 76ers. And, you know, they had, um, back then, mm -hmm. you know, they only had so many Afro-Americans on the team. Limitations. Limitations. And there's no doubt about it, he should have played in the NFL, I mean, in the NBA. But him not playing led the way for me. Mm -hmm. You know, he told me everything that I needed to do if I wanted to play at my size. He said, you got to be better than the competition. Mm -hmm. You know, he said, I don't care what nobody say. Don't ever let them tell you what you can't do because mm. you can get it done. Yes. And, and, and I told him, I said, Coach, I, I'm playing in the NBA. And he told me, he said, you got to work at it. And I never forgot that. And that was one of the reasons. I went to Graham because he went to Graham. I wanted to fulfill his dream mm -hmm. through me. And when I went to Graham, every game I played at Graham, Hershey West said at half court. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. A yes. lot of people asked me back in the day, why are you going to Graham? Why not? Why not? Hershey West taught me everything I knew about the game. And I took it to Graham. And I took it to the NBA. Yes, you did. And then I'm going to tell you, see, a lot of people don't realize this. When I left the NBA, you know, I went overseas. After you played it, after you from Washington to Detroit. Yes. I played overseas. And, and your first year, let me, let me, let yes. me inject this. I, yes. I, I read up on this. <laughs> yeah. Your first season there in Italy. Yes. That team, which you can expound on yes. here, you were the MVP. Yes. And the first time they ever won a European championship. Yes. We Please won, tell about that. We won the Italian champ championship the first time they ever won in 40 years. Mm. Okay, the next year we won the European championship. They had never won that championship before. Now, come on, Larry. You win a high school state championship. Y'all won swag too, didn't you? Yes. You won the swag. <laughs> yeah, right in my own hometown yeah, yeah. of Monroe, Louisiana. Then you win an NBA championship. Yes. Then you go overseas and win another championship. Yes. Wow. Yes. You talk about a winner. Yes. And and you know God been good to me. Yes. My mother was good to me. Yes. My mother said to me, "You ain't better than nobody, but ain't nobody better than That's you." That's right. That's right. And I kept that with me all my life. What my mother said to me, what Hershel West said to me, what Fred Hobby said to me, what the great Eddie Robinson yes. said to me. Yes. The great Eddie Robinson told me, he say, they can talk about Grambling all they want. He say, but the great Bob Hopkins played at Grambling. Mm -hmm. The great Willis Reed played at Grambling. The great James Jones played at Grambling. He said, hey, damn it to hell, they paved the way. Yes. He yes. said, now you here at Grambling now. And we were getting ready to play Jackson State. Mm -hmm. Okay, they had Eugene Shaw, With Purvis Shaw. Big Red, we call him. The, the seven-foot guy yeah, with the big he, bush hair. Yeah, yeah. Henry Ward. <laughs> yeah. They had all these guys, and they was ranked number one in small college basketball at mm -hmm. the time. In my own newspaper, the Monroe Morning World, had them featured. Yes. Jackson State enters Grambling tonight. 
to take on the Tigers of Grambling. Coach Robinson called me in his office and said to me, he said, now they talking about them Shaw boys at, at Jackson. Mm -hmm. They talking about that number one team that's coming in here tonight. He said, but damn it, let me tell you. Hell, we got Larry Wright. There you go. And when I left his office, I went and got me some lunch. And I went to my room and I went to sleep. Got me a nap for the game. All I thought about is what Coach Robinson said. How did you feel? Little old me. How did you feel? From Monroe, Louisiana. Yeah, yeah. Hell, we got you. Yeah. Yes. You know. And that night, mm, come on, I want man. you to know that night, everything he said, every dribble I took, up the court, I thought about what he told me. He said, we got you. Jackson didn't get out that night. Yes. No, they didn't get out that night. And <laughs> we beat them in ground. Mm. They was number one and had two first-round draft choices and three more draft choices on their team. Mm -hmm. But Coach Robinson, the great Eddie Robinson, yes. he said, we have you. That was enough for me. Yeah. Yeah, that was enough. And your faith and belief in what he told you, you yes. just took it, it was gold. And no doubt about it. If he told me I could walk on water, I believe in it. It's amazing what your belief yes. can do for you. There's no doubt about it, man. And he was a guy, and I can see how so many guys that played for him and played for Coach Hobby, mm -hmm. played for Ralph Waldo Emerson Jones, who was the baseball coach as the president. I can see why Grambling was what it was. Because they not only taught you how to be an athlete, they taught you how to be a man. Yes. They yes. taught you how to stand for something, believe in something, yes, yes. and go out and get it done. Yes. Dio Gramlin, how we love Dio Gramlin. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, awesome. That's man. awesome. It's awesome. You know, you, you were telling me about Little Larry. Yes. But see, little Larry, I remember when you were at Grambling, I was at Wildsman, you and Sammy White, y'all come and worked out with us, going up and yes. down the court. Yes. And I remember when I saw you dunk backwards. Yes. Little Larry. Little Larry. Way up there, dunking backwards. And it wasn't no, just no barely dunk. It was a good dunk backwards. Yeah. Hershey West, man, I'm telling you, he just made us bleed. Mm -hmm. When we stepped out on the court. We could get it done. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And he treated everybody the same. Yes. You know what I mean? From the first to the 15th man. If Sam and I wasn't playing, we wasn't going to play. Mm -hmm. So we knew when we stepped on that court, we had to get it done. Mm -hmm. And it's all because of Hershey West. And we talk to this day. I go see him. We sit down and we talk. We talk about the game. We talk about life. We talk about everything, you know. And we reminisce. Yes. We talk about the great ball games we had cross town against Wiseman, Carroll, West Monroe Bath. We talked the whole game. Yes. yes. And and he always say, to this day, it's not the same as it used to be. The competition ain't the same. Cause we played each other and we went after each other. Yes. We tried to win the ball game, but afterwards it was over. We were friends. Yes. You know, and I mentioned to you about my friend Billy Robinson. Yes. <clears throat> One of the best friends I ever had in my life to this day. And when we played against each other, we was trying to kill each other. Mm -hmm. And then after the game, he'd run to me smiling, and I'd be smiling at him. <laughs> my he was my partner. Yes. Yes, he was. You know, though Billy didn't make it into the league, his daughter did. He did. She did. Yes. And I watched her play. Yes. And a lot of people didn't know about her father. Yeah. But I did. And when I seen her do some stuff, I could see Billy in her. You know, I was I've been telling Crystal about Billy. Yes. Because, see, Billy was someone that inspired me. No doubt about it. You know, I tried to, you know, how he threw that ball behind his He's back. back. Yes. It was like art. Yes, you know? yes. And he could get up at 6'5". Yes. Wow. And you guys were supposed to go to college together, didn't yes. you? Yes, and we had made a promise that we was going to high school together, that we was going to go to college together. None of that panned out. But I had him for a month in college. And I... Had him at Graham, and I thought I had my partner, and he left. And I know, I know to this day, if Billy had stayed at Graham, Billy would have went to the NBA. Mm. He had all the skills. Billy had more skills than I had, plus he was taller than I had. Mm -hmm. and I, and, than I was, 
and I thought I could motivate him. Mm -hmm. If I could keep him around, I could get him to do anything. I love me some Billy now. Mm. Yes. You know, because you said you guys were together all the first grade on up. Oh, first grade on up. Yeah. That's Swayze. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It was, he was my partner, you know, and uh, I love Billy. You know, but Larry also, you know, after it was all said and done, you know, you came back, you was assistant coach at Grambling. Yes. Then you went, what, nine years as the head coach as the head at Grambling State University. head basketball coach at Grambling, I sure did. And uh, it, was an, it was enjoyable to be at your alma mater mm -hmm. <laughs> so you could impact the guys. You know, it's, it's, basketball is great, but Coach Hobdy, the legendary Coach Hobdy, uh, Hobdy told my mother, he said, if he goes to Grambling, I'm going to send him back a better man with a college degree. And when I took the job at Grandma, I remember those words. We didn't have the type talent, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because I could have went to school anywhere in the country. Right, right. Okay, we didn't have that type player, you know what I mean? But I, for, I remember what Coach Ivey said, and every player, well, 95% of my players graduated mm -hmm. from Grambling. And they called me from time to time, you know, thanking me, yes. you know. For leading them to a better life, you know, their families and that type of thing. And that's what Coach Ivy and them always talk about. Family is everything. And you carry that on when during your coaching. Career. No doubt, no doubt about it. You had to graduate. But Larry, let's let, let's talk about the NBA. Okay. Because that first game of that series of that championship game, now who was that again? Seattle. Yeah, Seattle. Uh -huh. And Seattle Supersonics. Right? Yes. And that first game. Yes. You were the MVP of that yes. game. Yes. Here's Wright. Unseld is out there. Wright makes his move on the glass. Sickman coming with him. Little Larry got it done. That's 24 points for Larry Wright. He is 12 of 16. Here's that move. Oh, Gus turned to talk to Paul Silas as he did it. Lonnie just blew right by him. Matter of fact, you know, it seems like y'all were having a little difficulty there, and then all of a sudden, you were the man of the hour. Yes. And you scored 20 something points. Yes. And y'all won that first of that series. We won the first game, and, yeah. and, I, and I never forget it. Um, at the end of the game, of mm -hmm. course, I was on the foul line, and I missed the first shot. So here is Wright. He doesn't hit the free throw. He got three, he's got three chances, Brent. This game is over. Lonnie Wright's not going to miss three. You know, on the foul line. But I remember what Hershey West says. You know, you either miss it long or short. You don't miss it to the side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> long or short. I right, missed, the, right, first, I missed right. the first one short. Uh -huh. So I knew I had the second one. That's right. That's and, right. And, this game is over. Lonnie Wright's not going to miss three. The Bullets will win game one. There it is. The Bullets win on the free throw by Larry Wright. And look at the Sonics protesting. They win by two. And you know what inspired me so? Man, I know everybody in Monroe, Louisiana was watching the game. That's right. I know my mama was watching the game. All my coaches, you know, I had to make the people you didn't even know That's right. was watching the game hey. because of you. Yes, and uh, I was from Monroe, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. I couldn't let Monroe down. Right. I had to come home. I had to go to the wreck. <laughs> I had to go. To, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I couldn't walk in the wreck and then make that free throw. You know, but um, you know, it's just like playing in the wreck to me. You know, we're in the championship game because I've been in part of, part of championship. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I remember Elvin at the foul line when I went to the foul line because I, you know, I was right at 80% free throw shooter. And Elvin winked his eye at me. He knew it was over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he knew I was going to miss three of them. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. People are going to have to see that. Yes. What did you think after you had missed that first one? What was going through your mind? Well, I knew I had two more, 
and you just got to believe you can make them in those situations. And I took my time and knocked it in. Looked like you didn't even care about that third when you started to go off the court. Hey, we didn't need but one. <laughs> That's right. And, and I remember this past 4th of July, when, you know, we was having our family reunion. Because I remember my mother when we were young, we always had a family reunion, regardless whether we was able or not, mm -hmm. she made a way out of some way. Yes. We was going to have a family reunion. And when she passed away, she said, now, so I want y'all to pass this on down. You know, he said, now, told my oldest brothers, we're going to pass it on down. Okay, we're going to always have a family reunion. Mm -hmm. So this, for some reason this year, they decided to surprise me with that tape. Really? Yes, at the you know, and nobody told me anything. Uh -huh. And see, some of my little nieces and nephews, I never talk about it, you know, so they didn't know about it, you know what I'm saying? So what they did, they I go in the house, and they had it on the TV. And and uh, my nieces and nephews, you know, they man, they just couldn't believe it, you know. It yes. sent me running down the floor, and. Uh, I said, oh, man, who did this? You know, and my younger son had did it. And then after they watched it, you know, they asked me to say something, you know. I said, Uncle Larry, why you never talk about it, you know? I said, well, you know, I'm from Monroe. We don't talk about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? We do it. Yeah. But we really don't talk about it. You know, there's all the guys from Monroe, the Sammy Whites, the mm -hmm. James Harris, mm -hmm. The how boys, we never talk about what we did, but this day I had to say something, you know. And everybody's uh, looking at you with big wide eyes. Yes, indeed. Waiting to hear from you. Yeah, waiting to hear from me. So I had to say something. I said, What do y'all want me to say? You know? I say, you know, once upon a time, Uncle Larry was a decent athlete. Decent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I say he was a decent athlete. And I say, but I want to attribute this to something. And my oldest brother, next to the oldest brother, he was sitting there. I say, but I know what y'all think. I'm finna say something about myself. I say, but look at Uncle Ron. I say, Uncle Ron was a football player at Richwood. I say, as a little boy, every football practice they had. Uncle Ron and my other oldest brother took me with them to make sure that I got involved in athletics. I don't take the credit. Wow. Yeah, wow. I don't take the credit. I said, that's big, my big brother. And, and, and I told him, I said, I was in high school. He was in Vietnam. I say, we wrote to each other all the time. You know, always encouraged me. I say, but at that time, they used to put money in a letter mm -hmm. when they write to you. And I say, every time my big brother wrote me, he put some money in the envelope for me, for mm. his little brother. Mm. You know, and, and he always made sure I had clothes on my back and a few dollars in my pocket, so... I don't take any credit for it. Mm. My big brother took me to every football practice and told me, say, now, you don't start nothing, you know. You don't start no fights, you know what I mean? He say, but if somebody hits you, he say, I'll be disappointed in you if you didn't defend yourself. Yes, yes. So... I took all of that to the basketball court with me. Whether I was at the Johnson Recreation Center, Grambling State University, Monroe Civic Center, or Rome, Italy. Yes. <laughs> I took it all with me. You know, I competed. Yes. Because of my big brother. Wow. Yes. You're talking about the inspiration that those that touch us along the, on along this journey of life. Along the way. And I had a mother that raised nine. Nine. Seven boys and two girls by herself. Mm -hmm. And I never seen a hungry day. Mm. Never seen a hungry day. And I'm going to tell you a story. When I was being recruited by major universities across the country, 
Even the great LSU, Dale Brown, was a great recruiter, mm -hmm. okay? And when they came to my house in little old Monroe and sit down with my mother, okay, and a lot of things happened during that time where money passed hands mm -hmm. and all that type mm -hmm. thing. And often my mother, job, home, but my mother knew I wanted to go to Graham. Mm -hmm. And my mother asked me in front of big time college coaches, she said, son, where you want to go to school at? So me and my mother got up and walked in the back room. And I said, Ma, I want to go to Graham. I said, but Ma, these people are offering you a job. Yeah a house, or whatever. Deep pockets. Deep pockets. My mother, you know what she told me? She said, boy, your mama ain't never had nothing. You can go where you want to go. Mm -hmm. Made me a man. Wow. You hear what I say? I'm hearing you. She said, go where you want to go. Mm -hmm. My mama, like I tell people, most men would say they had a hero. I had a shero. Yes. My mama was tough, man. I seen her get up, walk to work to feed her children. And didn't complain. Didn't complain. Mm. And the first time I got a check from the NBA, it went straight to my mother. Wow. She said, boy, I don't want your money. I said, ma, this ain't my money. I said, you take it. At that time, you know, you know, $25,000 was a lot of money. Yes, That yes. was a bonus, you yes. know. I said, hey, Ma, this is yours. She said, boy, I don't want your money. I said, hey, it's yours. $25,000 back in the late 70s. That was, a, that was a lot of money. That was my mama. Wow. First thing I did. That's awesome. I told her, you do what you want to do. Yes, yes. Wow. That was my mother. That's awesome, Larry. That's yes. awesome. You know. Speaking of all these, you know, the mega, you know, the, the big schools today and, you know, everybody's now thinking of D1, D1, D1. D1. That's all on kids' minds today. Right. You know, you want to talk about that a little bit, how they overlook a lot of other opportunities. And, and, and that's a major problem now, especially with the transfer portal and all that type thing. You know, the key to anything, your business or whatever business, you got to have the fundamentals of that business. Mm -hmm. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Kids look at the big name schools sometimes, and I have nothing against big name schools, okay? But looking at these big name schools, they forget the fundamentals of basketball. The great Kobe Bryant, mm -hmm. the great Michael Jordan say, you know, you have all this AAU, mm -hmm. all these big schools, but without the fundamentals. Yes. You can't play in no school. And then what they find out, when they go to some of these big schools, that their fundamentals are not in place. Mm -hmm. Some of the guys that go there are. Their fundamentals, they have great fundamentals. You follow me? Mm -hmm. So now when you get there, you get frustrated. See, because if you can dribble past and shoot, you can do it anywhere. Mm -hmm. And that is what the great Fred Hobb did, was a master of. He made sure that you had your fundamentals in order. And see, I got a touch of them at what yeah, at Rave, I'm not at Rave, but at Richwood mm -hmm. with Herschel with West. The great, the great Herschel West at Richwood, he taught us the fundamentals, the left hand, the right hand, the handle with both hands. Mm -hmm. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? He taught us everything, the boxing out, the defense, move your feet. Yes. If you got the, the passing of the ball, when to pass it, how to pass mm -hmm. it, I don't care where you go, that's fundamental. Yes, yes. Passing is passing, shooting is shooting. Dribbling is dribbling. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everywhere you go. So I think they make a mistake. See, you go to a big school and you never get a chance to play. Everybody can't play. That's right. You got to go somewhere you have an opportunity to play. Mm -hmm. Okay? If you don't go where you can play, it don't make no difference how good you are. You can't show your ability. Mm -hmm. The fundamentals that you have mastered. That's right. 
but they make that mistake. You know, yeah. during our era back in the day, you know, the fundamentals were important. Important. You know, and they were yeah. taught. Yes. But it's lacking more so today. It's lacking now. Yes. You you got people, if you can shoot, that's all you do. Mm -hmm. You can handle the ball. That's all. I heard, I heard, I heard James Worthy this morning mm -hmm. on TV. And, you know, he said, kids today, you know, they go one year, they leave college. Okay. They haven't mastered the fundamentals. No. Say when he said when they get to the NBA and playing against these veteran guys, mm -hmm. they realize that these guys are fundamentally sound. They're lacking something. Yeah. Now we don't have a chance to do this because they got it in college. He said Kareem was in college four years. Mm -hmm. You follow mm -hmm. me? Kareem had every fundamental in the book. Bill Russell. Every fundamental in the book. Those guys, like Magic Johnson and Bird, they went to college. Mm -hmm. Two years, Bird went four. Mm -hmm. Word, they had all the fundamentals. Michael Jordan had all the fundamentals. Dr. J. Dr. J. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? But they think, man, they can just, all of a sudden, they in the NBA. Mm -hmm. They finna be the MVP. Uh, they in college. They finna be the best. But hey, it's some other guys playing basketball too. That's right. But if you master your fundamentals, you can play with somebody, you know. And they're not doing that now. So they true. they want it's an overnight kid now. They want cell phone, you know. They, you know, games instead of out there working on the game. Right, right. They playing the game on the cell phone. You know, we have all that. I, we had to go to the wreck. You have to use a physical body at some point. That's right. We had to go to the wreck. Yes. You know, we go to the wreck and get beat up, but we'll go back the next day. That's right. You know what I mean? That's different than the cell phone. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it really, you, can't, you can't enhance those no, skills. You can't. <laughs> you know, that you're out man. there. You got to be out there. You know, the beauty of that, you mentioned the wreck in Monroe. What do we have? About seven wrecks? Yes. You know? And the thing about it is we go all over we go, to look for the we competition. We go everywhere yeah. to challenge our game. Yes. And, and there's something that's happening in Monroe now that I don't disagree with, that I don't agree with, I disagree with. Mm -hmm. You have to pay to go to the wreck now. Really? If you and I had to pay to go to the wreck, we, we couldn't go. go. Right. We couldn't go. Right. Our mama had to use that money for something else. Right. Man, they had to pay every time they go to the wreck. Somebody needs to talk to the mayor. Yes, yes. He, he, he made that call. Because they run by the city anyhow. Yes. If you can't go to the wreck, then you're going to go out there and do some stuff. You Taxpayers' ain't got no money. Come on. You know, if you can't go to that wreck, you're going to end up going out in them streets yes. doing something you ain't got no business that's right. doing. That's, that's a bad thing they did. The wreck made us. Yes, it did. Kept us out of trouble. That's right. Because when you were in school, where were you? At the wreck. Yeah. They, they, they had to pay. Wow. Yeah, they had to pay. Think about so many kids that... I couldn't have paid. Yeah. Think about now yes, that can't pay. Can't what pay. are they doing now yeah, doing when so they could be out there, like you say, keeping them out of trouble. Out of trouble. Developing social relationships, exactly. enhancing skills. Tutoring programs yes. at the wreck. Yeah. They got to pay to go to the wreck, man. Wow. That's not right. Wow. You know. Well, Larry, I'll tell you what. It's been it's a joy sitting here with you. You know, we did a lot of talking before I started yes. shooting the camera. Yes. And... Uh, Man, I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased and thank you for giving me an opportunity to be here with you today and speak with. Now, how I look at you and how <laughs> other people look at you, mm -hmm. I look at you as someone because I had an opportunity to watch you. Right. I had an opportunity to play against That's you. That's right. And see, and when we play against greatness, what does that do? Like you talk it about Coach West and others. It That's right. Better. We take a little bit of some away from each one we play against. That's right. And when you call me. And said you wanted to do this story. Hey, man, my eyes lit up. You know what I mean? Because it's a homeboy. You know what I'm saying? Thank like you. they say, game. Yes. Recognize game. Yes, yes. You understand? Yes. And you came to talk to your homeboy. Yes. Hey, man, you don't know how good I felt. You know what I mean? When you said you was coming. You know, because I know, you know, the history of Monroe. Yes. See, everybody came do this interview. Well, thank you. Yeah, see, somebody, they'll be guessing. A lot of people be guessing about it. 
you know about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. You know about the wreck. Yeah. You know about the guys that you looked up to. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? Anybody couldn't have did this interview. It was an easy interview for me. It fired me up. Made me think about how good Monroe was to us. Yes. And I'm going to lay it I got to tell you, too. Just let's talking to you. You, if I could take off my shirt, you might see chills. Yeah, hey man, I feel good. <laughs> yeah, I feel You're good. You're talking about fired up. Listen, Just... I'm going to tell you, a lot of these kids walk the hall, they don't mm -hmm. even know who I am. But this little school right here, I'm going to tell you something. This school right here, Black History Month, mm -hmm. okay, they took one of the weeks and made it Larry Wright Week here at this school. Some of the kids didn't even know who I was. But when they discovered who you were, made it all the difference in the world. I can see wide eyes looking yes, at you now. Yes, he was a different kid altogether. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm saying, man, you don't know. And whenever you get a copy of this, mm -hmm. this film, I got to have one. Oh, yeah. Because I got to show my folks. Definitely. And my folks is in Monroe. I'm talking about people in Monroe. Yes. A homeboy came all the way to Monroe to interview me. Man, you don't know how that made me feel. Well... That's real. You know, Larry, I like to say we don't know what others see in us. Yes. But we do know what we see in them. Man, come on. And so what I see in you yes. and always have saw in yes. you was someone that I admire. Man, you came to Monroe. Yeah. You came to my job to talk to me. Thank you, Larry. Man, it don't get no better. It really hey, don't. Hey, man, ain't no different than this than when I made that free throw now. Yeah. That's how I feel today. Wow. Hey, man, you done reminisced me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you now, man, you done made me feel good today. Oh. You know, really. Well, yeah. thank you. Yeah. I'm feeling good, too. Yeah, and when It's you, mutual. No, I ain't no doubt about it, man. <laughs> I, I, hey, Billy, I hope you watch it. He's watching. Yes, yeah. yes. His daughter will, too. Yes, yes, no <laughs> doubt about it, man. No doubt about Larry, it. But I tell you, but as we were wrapping up here, mm -hmm. if there is anything that, which we've said a lot, mm -hmm. But if there's anything else that's on your heart, on your mind, that you want to say to America, to the world, right? I'm going to give you the final word. And if you would, please, look in that camera. Okay. And what, speak what, to what I would What I would like to say, um, the United States and America, we're having difficult times. Think about the 13 kids that just got killed the other day. 13 kids not bothering anybody. The guy, the trigger man, I don't know who he is. I don't know if one day somebody tried to help him and he didn't get help. And it turned him, turned him into what he was the other day. Think about young kids and try to encourage them. Everybody's not perfect. Everybody makes mistakes. If a kid does something that is wrong, try to talk to him and stir him in the right direction. Because it's some hope somewhere. You're looking at hope. I came from a family of nine kids, seven boys and two girls. My mother never gave up on me. Herschel West never gave up on me. Fred Hobbs never gave up on me. So if you can't say anything good to a kid, just don't say anything at all. Try your best to encourage him to do the right thing and you can make a difference in someone's life. Wow, wow. And I gotta say, Larry, I truly appreciate the time, yeah, I and I got to shake your hand. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks, it, a lot. thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. The city of Monroe, 
Louisiana. I'm here on the campus of ULM University of Louisiana Monroe. Used to be called Northeast Louisiana University. In this small city of Monroe, it has probably per capita more professional athletes than anywhere in the United States. This is the Coliseum that I had the opportunity when I was in high school playing basketball at. ULM, now called University of Louisiana Monroe, was Northeast Louisiana University, and it looked like this back then, D1 school. And guys I played against that attended this school was Calvin Nett, Kenny Nett, Eugene Robinson, Jamie Mayo, and just those four I named all got drafted in the NBA. And some of you may be aware, familiar with those names. But these guys came here and they turned this place out and guys who I knew because I played against them regularly. We're in the same district. <laughs> and they attended Bastrop just about 18 miles from here. But this what makes part of Monroe special. And that's part of the development of Monroe with all these professional athletes. So sharing a piece of Monroe with you and what makes Monroe so great because there is a lot of talent here. So imagine living in the city of Monroe and you get to play against college players when you're in high school. And they have about seven recreational centers with basketball courts and all of that, including the YMCA. So it's a lot of places you can go and improve your game, whatever you're looking for. But Monroe is unique because there are a lot of professional athletes here, mostly football, uh, because you have ULM here in Monroe, and a 30-minute drive, you have Gramlin State University. And also from there, near Gramlin, also a 30-minute drive is Louisiana Tech University. And you can see why just about in every church, they are professional, that's a pro in somebody's church. Monroe.